In this video lecture, I'm going to demonstrate how to bring data out of the EDAT system into Stata. So if you recall, EDAT is an environment in which you can access numerous data sets put together by the NCES, um, which is the National Center for Education Statistics. One of the data sets we've looked at is the ECLSK, so we'll use that as an example data set. So to begin with, we're in our browser, uh, Firefox in this case, looking at the EDAT system. And I've already chosen a number of variables from the Eccles data set that I'm interested in. As you recall, you simply choose variables by clicking the box beside the variable that you want to include in your data set. Now, once you've made all the selections and chosen the variables that are of interest to you, you're going to go to the top where it says Download Options, and you're going to choose Download Data and Syntax Files. By choosing this option, you will get to download both the data set as well as the syntax or code files necessary for extracting your data. So I'll click Download Data and Syntax Files, EDAT will take me to a screen uh, showing that it's going to load the temporary tag file. In this case, it's only three variables that I chose to tag or click. I'll say next step. Step two, I get to choose the file format for the data that I'm interested in. In this case, we're using Stata, so I'll make sure that the dot beside Stata is chosen. Alternatively, we could download the data set in an SPSS format or a generic format like the CSV comma separated format. We'll leave it on uh, Stata and we'll click Next Step. Now it's going to give us a warning and say this is a very big file. It may take a long time to download. We'll say OK to that. Now, for you, if you've never downloaded the ECLSK data, you would click this yellowish orange button that says Download ECLSK Data. And notice that in its compressed format, it's almost a quarter of a gigabyte of data. When it's decompressed, it'll be over a gigabyte of data. So this is a very, very large data set. It will take a while to download. For the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to skip downloading it. I've already got it downloaded on my computer. But as you work through this, you would need to go ahead and download it for the first time. All right, once your data is downloaded, you'll click Next Step, as I did, and you'll find yourself on Step 4, which is to download the syntax file. Now, again, the syntax file is simply the text or code that allows you to extract the variables of interest that you're interested in studying. You'll click, then, again, the yellow orangish button that says Download Syntax Files. You get the option to either open or save these files. I'll just choose to open them. You notice they download quickly because they're not actually the data themselves. They're just uh, text files with code to, to open this data. So I now have three syntax files. The first thing I want to do is extract these files. Again, they come in a compressed format, so I'm just going to simply unzip or unextract these files so that I can access them directly. In Windows, you'll do this by clicking the Extract All button at the top of your file browser. It'll ask me to choose a location at which I'd like to extract these. I'll make a folder on the desktop that I will label ECLSK. And say OK to that. And then I'll click Extract, and Windows will extract those files for me. All right, now, these three files are going to be of interest to us. The first is labeled Codebook. If we open Codebook, we'll notice that it's simply a text file that has information about the variables I chose. So for instance, I can see that I chose the child ID variable, I chose a reading scale score, and a math scale score, as well as the highest level of education achieved by the teacher. Now, the Codebook can be useful for understanding what the different categories or codes for these variables mean. For instance, the variable on highest education level of the teacher I can see that the value of 1 corresponds to a high school or associate's degree, or bachelor's degree. I can see that a category of 2 corresponds to at least one year past a bachelor's degree, 3 a master's degree, and so forth. An important thing to note here is that the data will come with values for missing. So negative 7, negative 8, and negative 9 correspond to either a refusal to answer the question, a response of not knowing, or for some other reason this information was not ascertained from the respondent. When we get into cleaning our data, we'll need to deal with these, um, particularly to take out these missing values. All right, the next two files are called a dictionary file and a syntax file. And these are the files that will actually extract the variables that you want from the large data set that you downloaded. So the idea here is to only keep the variables that you're interested in and be able to drop or get rid of the, the variables that are not pertinent to your study. Now, for the most part, you're not going to have to worry about the details of the syntax or dictionary file. But there are a few small changes that we'll need to make these files function for us. So I'm going to go ahead and begin by opening the syntax file. You'll notice that when I click it, it automatically opens in Stata. 
So I'm going to scroll down until I see the cd or change directory command. Now when this file is downloaded from the EDAT system, it doesn't know where on your computer the file will be downloaded to. So it puts in this kind of generic placeholder for the working directory. What we're going to need to do though is to change that to the directory that we're interested in. So again in Windows to find a directory we will simply right click, copy address from the folder we want to use and then paste that address into our working directory, noting that we may have to add a backslash on the end to show that we're going to be within that new folder directory. All right, so I've made that change. I will simply save that syntax file and set it aside for a moment. Returning to my downloaded files, I'm going to go to the dictionary file now. And I'm going to need to make one change to the dictionary file. You notice the first line of code references the location of the data itself. So, it's got the file name. This is the actual name of the data set file. But of course, this uh, file folder location is probably not where I have the, the file actually saved on my computer. So what I'm going to do is um, locate this file on my computer by searching for it. So you'll notice I actually have a couple copies of it on my computer. I locate the file, click on the file, and I'm able to get through the properties, the folder name where I could find this file. If you work through this, this actually should be much easier because the data will download um, almost directly with the syntax file, so you'll have those two in the same location. But in my dictionary file, I'll replace the code with the file name, again noting that I need to add a backslash here before the file name. So now this first line of code in the dictionary file properly references the location of the actual data that I downloaded. Again, I'll make sure to save the dictionary file, and then I will close that file. All right, returning then to the syntax file in Stata, we're going to go to the top of the button that says Execute Do File. We'll click that button. And then we'll watch our output folder, our output screen. And we will notice that it ran the code inside that Do File. And what we should find from having done that is the creation of a new file of interest to us, or the actual file that just contains the variables we're interested in. You may notice that this takes a little while, right? So I'm kind of waiting here for the file to be saved. The data hasn't told me that it's actually saved the file. If you notice at the very bottom of the screen, there was a little swirling uh, moving piece, and that tells you that Stata is still thinking or still working on the file. Of course, that just ended. It gave me the rest of the output. And we can see if we scroll up that Stata did save the file. If I go back then to my folder, I notice that I now have a new fourth file, which is a Stata dataset file. Notice this is much smaller than the big dataset that we originally downloaded. That's because this dataset just contains the variables that we were interested in. In other words, we've extracted the variables of interest. If I was to double click this Stata dataset file, open it in Stata, I would find in my variable window that I have the four variables that I selected in EDAT, particularly the child ID, the two test scores, and the education level of the instructor. All right, and at that point, I'm then ready to open my do file editor and begin cleaning this data and analyzing this data. All right, so this was a simple introduction to opening data from the EDAT system into Stata. Again, the steps we went through were to identify the variables in EDAT that we wanted, download the data and syntax files, change the file directory in the dictionary file, and to change the file directory in the syntax file, and then to run the syntax file. If you follow these steps, you should be able to also download data either from ECHLs or other data sets in the EDAT system and successfully extract the variables of interest to a smaller state of data set. I hope this is helpful, and I look forward to working with you in future video lectures.